Where am I? Stay where you are. It would be best if you refrained from bringing out any weapons as well. Fair. I you can't really blame me for that. Wait, Edelgard. Hold on. What are all three of you doing here? I have the same question. It appears we've been swallowed up by some kind of strange magic. Well... Oh, come on, Edelgard. Sure, we've had our differences, but that doesn't mean I want you dead. Yes, if you want my honest opinion, I want you, Dimitri, and Rhea all to sit down at a daggum table and talk things out. But the game won't let me. You know... I only thought this would happen in my dreams. Well, all right then. The three of you are back together. Can we, like, you know, just pull up a table? I can clear this all, whole thing up, like, really quickly. That's the long and short of it. But isn't all of this your doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, in, in theory. <sighs> when we awoke, we found ourselves here in this dark and ominous void. Where Blake at? Is he here? He could help us out. Whoa, he doesn't have his sword. Where's the sword? Don't tell me you can't remember what happened. You suddenly transformed and started attacking your friends. Luckily, we managed to knock you out and capture you. But it wasn't long before you came to and escaped. I was told that you were acting like someone else entirely. Yeah. <sighs> uh, hey, Dimitri. Uh, sorry about what happened, man. I guess that kind of rings a bell. The last thing I remember is Arval telling me to slay the Ashen Demon. At least... I think it was Arval. You gotta explain who Arval is, great. Arval? The voice in my head. We've known each other for a few years now. Uh, huh. Dimitri is tall, man. Pretty out there, right? This is why I never mentioned it. And you claim this Arval suddenly decided to turn on you? Yeah, I mean, look, if, if I truly wanted to do you harm, I'd be fighting right now. I know how it sounds, but yeah. There are two things I can say for sure. The first is that Arval's magic is what dragged us all in here. And the second huh. is that no one's in my head anymore. So I don't have access to my mode anymore. How can you be certain? Because I don't feel them. At least not in my mind. Arval's somewhere else now. Somewhere distant. I don't mean for this to be an interrogation. But distant? From where? This story of yours is hardly convincing. No, I understand, Edelgard. It doesn't really make much sense. Well, you do seem to be your old self again. That, if nothing else, makes me want to believe what you're saying. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Claude. I know it's not easy to believe me right now, but... At the very least, I hope you know a way out of this fathomless prison. Oh, yeah! Uh, about that. About that. <laughs> I know I said distant, but Arval's definitely here with us somewhere. So are we taking him out? If we can find them and figure out what magic they used on us, we might just be able to escape. I like that plan. That sounds wildly optimistic. It is, but I like optimistic. That's who I am, Edelgard. It sure does. But considering we don't know a thing about this place, we might as well give it a shot. I'd rather be optimistic until, even if it seems foolish, you know? In that case, let's begin looking around and see if we can't find any clues to where we are. Okay. Am I using all of you now? If this is the end of the game, then okay. Zaharas. We're, we're in Zaharas. Really? You know, is there any chance that they will squash the beef in this area when we leave? No. All right. Well, I uh, so much for my team. Yeah. Um. Well, at the very least, I'm glad we still got Claude. I could give him the others' bows, but why would I do that? Okay. Now is a perfect time to save um yeah let me let me just talk about what's all transpired 
while I'm still have issues about what's been happening with Claude, I am at least glad I heard some stuff about the, um, I'll, yeah, I think I can just tell you all now. Basically, people said, like, the game is incomplete. That's what's my been my very big worry um, about reaching to this point. But I feel like we could get a, a, some sort of ending here. Like, sure, the war got massively derailed, but Grape's appearance is a derailer in itself. Plus... Mm. This can give the time of them to t uh, all three of them to talk. Like, does Dimitri even know why these two are fighting? Well, that's question number one. Question number two: Does Edelgard know what Dimitri's true plans are? Like, if he even wants to back up Rhea? Like, all three of them, essentially. Uh oh. Huh? Oh, we can? Really? Oh, huh, how about that? A giant shell, cool. I didn't miss out on anything important. Hmm. So if I chose to do this, Okay, good. Good. That's all I wanted. I can still level up my team. And I will say, I do remember, Blake had... Yes, this was locked, and I got it as soon as I possibly could. So we're not done. Okay. That makes me happy. And I can still... Can I level up my team? I can, though right now there's really no need to. Thankfully, we can level up to Lysithia's level. That would be beneficial. Okay. And I guess we can collect some supplies. All right. I'm, I'm liking where things are going at least at the very, I know it's a small bar to ask for, but I just wanted a conclusion to Grape's story. And interestingly enough, since all three of them are here, I wonder if this is an intersecting point. Like this is, happens in all three stories. That would make sense. I mean, I would want it, regardless of what route you choose, you know, I want you to be able to know what happened with Grape. So. And actually, yeah, if you save Blake, I would imagine this happens regardless. You know? Um, except the only one that I think would be odd is, wait, no, is this why Claude had to team up with Edelgard? Well, no, I think either way, Edelgard, like, because I'm thinking if you're, if you were an Edelgard, then Claude would be chasing Dimitri, so it would work for her route. Dimitri's route is the only weird one, because then it'd be Edelgard and Claude following, and why would the two of them be by themselves? For that matter, why the heck did Edelgard engage Dimitri by himself? Why are the two, why are the two of them alone? You no, know, I'm not going to question it. They're here. I'm happy. All right. Okay. I am back, everyone. And it's probably like weeks later, actually. Um, but my excitement is still here. One thing that I realized I can do. We have the training room. Right? Um... Oh, I'm actually going to use that later, but for now, let us, oh, right, we need to, um, change class for a brief second. Actually, let me take a picture of that just in case. Back to Grammary. I mean, this makes sense. Actually, what the heck? Why isn't Happy using this? So here's a little thing. I actually forgot. This has a separate ability. Um, actually, we should probably go unlock that first, huh? Oh, yeah. I found out this has Divine Glow. Restores a large amount of HP at regular intervals. So that's what it does. Fair enough. But what we're going to be doing, Relentless Magic. 
Magical. So it's the same as... It's the same as your sword. Because uh, it makes sense, it has a crest of Karen. Let's go see this. We have to win, no matter what. Huh. So that's what a rel <laughs> what the legendary relic looks like, huh? Huh. It's smaller than I expected. For you know the most pa quite literally the most powerful tome in the game right now. Right, I forgot. This gives her the ability to use, um... Well, first, let's just use her normal spells. Dark Spike C. Yeah. Same thing. As well as Luna. Wow, she can already use Dark Spike C again. Wow! Like, pretty much once... Oh, that's crazy. She's literally the nuke now. It's finished. She's, I don't know which weapon I want her to have. But she's the only one who can use them. If I had Catherine... Well, then it wouldn't be a problem. i just give Catherine her sword back. But this is meant for Lysithia. But it comes with an extra caveat. So... She gets Agnes Arrow. Large. Yeah, let's just... Agnes Arrow? Goodness. And even then... Even though Agnes' hero isn't powered up all the way. Not going to die yet. That's crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And then, we're not done. She also, I'm all, I mean, we're pretty much done, but it also her super. It's a shame her super her relic doesn't show up in her super at all, but huh. Jeez. Lysithia is genuinely OP. Genuinely. Satisfied. I will grow even stronger. No, please, I said that you're good. You're good. Do you understand? You can will three relics. You're good. All right. I'm actually. I'm actually. I actually don't know what I want her to be. Why can you do this? That's right, because she's got thirsts right now too. And Agnes Arrow isn't even powered up all the way. Oh, not to mention, I didn't have, you know, Apex Tome, Mage's Wisdom, you know, all that stuff equipped. Yeah, all right. All right, Lysithia. Um, let's, let's get back to the, let's get back to base. All right, but there's something else incredible that's happening right here. Let's talk to Edelgard first. <sighs> what would happen if we never? Es yeah, that's a question. What would happen to the war? Well, I mean, to be fair, the second in commands. Nah, that is a question because Dimitri. I think we could we were turning him around or at least we could I mean there's nothing to turn Dimitri around on I mean he's point is that I think 
you know, we could work together. With their second in command, it's like, with Hubert being the second in command of Edelgard? And then there's Arundel, who I'm pretty sure Talos, you know, he's still alive. Um, you, so what you're saying is you trust me more than him? You know, after I thought about it, and I'm like, I know Edelgard's true intentions, but uh, for this, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> Oh, please. No, that's not why I was laughing. Cuz, uh, Edelgard, you know. Dimitri, we need to talk. Okay. Um, I, I came over here talk. <laughs> the whole point I was trying to make is that I'm Claude's corner, you know? Like, why does Edelgard think I would reveal more to her than I would, you know... It's like she assumed I would have more loyalty to her in that moment. No, I'm, I'm loyal to Claude. I'm just gonna come out and say it. After the war, I'm going to abolish the Central Church and depose the Archbishop. The people of Fodland have been shackled by this decrepit system for too long, and I'm ending it. See, once again, I have a slight problem with... This is Edelgard's goal, you know? Not necessarily Claude... Oh. It can be Claude's, but I think Claude has could have his own reasons for ending Rhea's uh, rule. Oh, quote unquote rule. I just think it should come more so from him. Right now, it's just seeming like he's, you know, Edelgard 2.0. And he doesn't need to be. You're going to do away with the church? Look at this! Dimitri's like, wait, this is the first I'm hearing of this. That's right. Think about it. Who steals your freedom and gives you an endless list of duties and obligations simply because you have a crest? Who forces you and your friends into a bunch of unwanted marriages and positions of power? I would say, though, Fargus does, you know, play a part in that. The church even forbids any official contact with outside regions. This right here. Okay, I can't, I can't, um... I can't hide it forever, I guess, because otherwise I would seem... Let me just tell you all. This point, this was what I was going to base the video on. Claude is the heir to Almira. He came to Fultlin strictly for the, sen or for the reason of bridging the gap between those two people right well not just that but also you know world peace wouldn't be so bad too but mainly those two right getting holes to know not dare all that stuff this one line could put him at odds with Rhea and make it to where he would have to fight her in the future but they didn't build it up like this and like I said, I, I, trust me, there is a lot I'm going to go into, but this is the core. When I say that Claude has a good reason for ending up with fighting Rhea, this is it. Right here. This is, you can't get, like, outside regions, that's that's him entirely. That's him entirely. But I also do think the Agarthans just as much, because... Well, yeah, I can say this to you all, because the video is not going to be about the Agarthans. Okay, sorry about that. If you hear a lot of noise... In the background, I'll try to cut it out as much as possible, but I don't know why people decide to do stuff whenever I try to record. But anyways, when you think about it, the Agardens have been setting up the stage for war for a long time right now, right? And Edelgard and Dimitri have always been in their plans. But who is the biggest threat to them continuing the war? It's Claude, this outsider that they did not account for because we've seen, although, you know, they're... It wasn't exactly clarified, but there was something going on with Lawrence and, you know, the Regan family. The alliance would have been in an easy state for one area or another to come over and take over without a Regan heir. And, you know, the Agarthans thought that they were good. But then here comes Claude out of nowhere. Truly speaking, Claude should be their biggest threat because not only did he come out of nowhere, but he also wants peace. 
And a bunch of people, one of their biggest arguments was saying that, you know, the Agarthans didn't seem as competent, especially since Edelgard had, you know, taken care of them all. No diss to Edelgard, but I would think if you had a whole group planning something and they plan to give Edelgard this power to put her in the position that she would be ruling the Empire, I think for her to take them down, while sure it's poetic justice, it also really devalues the Agarthans and, you know, all their planning, I feel. With Byleth slash Blake's help, it makes more sense, but by herself, it's... I mean, I haven't seen it done, but still, that's just what I was thinking. Either way, my whole point was saying that the Golden Deer, I feel, should fight the war on two fronts, and that should be what their issue is. The Agarthans feel that they're the biggest threat because they could literally join, like I was saying all the whole time in Three Houses, if Claude chose to join one side or the other, that would have drastically reduced the time that the war went on and a victor would have been chosen. He literally probably could have decided who wins. And the Agarthans had nothing to do with, with Count Gloucester, Count Ordelia, Duke Gonril, or Margrave Edmund. So really it's by chance that, you know, this quote-unquote feigned neutrality happen. Oh, I'm just saying that I think there should have been a war on two fronts. Not sure how many, much of that I kept in there because I was interrupted for like a good 20 minutes, but... Not exactly great for Fargus, right? Being as close to Serang and Albinia as you are. But to be clear, your quarrel is with the church, yes? Yes. Not with Fargus itself? No, we apologize. Exactly. We have nothing to gain by fighting you. And really, our enemy isn't the actual church so much as the people at the top who make all the decisions. And even Seta doesn't want that, so it's just Rhea. I understand where you're coming from, Claude. And on a personal level, I actually agree with you. Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. See, 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 this is, this is exactly what I wanted. Here's the table, this this arena we're at, it's a giant table, and we're all sitting down, we're talking. But as a king, you're opposed. Yes, for three reasons. First, abolishing the church would deny the king's right to rule Fargus. Though Dimitri did say, well, two things. One, he said to Edelgard that the people should decide the future, not the rulers. Um, that's number one, but number two, he also did say right now that he personally agreed with Claude, but as king, he could not. Without one, the people will descend into chaos and war. Would you be able to take responsibility for such a thing once it came to pass? Well, currently, the church hasn't, uh, given Claude authority, so... Second, recklessly discarding the church will only incite discord among the clergy and its supporters. Now, I agree with that. And finally, a revolution of this nature will not only mean casualties among the common folk, but will endanger your own life as well. That is true. Leaving the first two for a second, I have some serious issues with that last one. I'm glad you're concerned for my safety, but I can take care of myself. Also true, because again, heir to Almira here. But don't you see? The people you wish to depose are human, just as you are. No matter what ingenious scheme you come up with, or how careful you try to be, they will suffer. Who's the they you're speaking to, Dimitri? And their vengeance will eventually find you, no matter how hard you try to stave it off. I mean, maybe that's the role that he decided to take. I know full well the guilt that accompanies such actions. And the retribution they provoke. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely would. I mean, to be honest, if I had my way, again, all three of us just approaching Rhea, you know, convincing her to stand down would have been better than a war. You know, I, I we never even considered that option. Everyone has to deal with the consequences of their decisions. If you let it rule you, Fodlin never changes. True. And if it doesn't change, it'll just fall apart. But not taking the time to look where you're going will only lead you to stumble and fall. Also true. If there are those who would be hurt by this, I consider it my duty to help them. And I agree with that, Dimitri. <laughs> there you go, trying to save everyone again. 
You really are too good for me. Claude, you're trying to do the same thing, just in a different way. To be honest, I'm jealous of how you're not burdened with the same restrictions. In the world I'm trying to create, you wouldn't be burdened by them either. You could even... No, forget that. I'm serious about what I said, though. And I really do admire how you want to save everyone. Again, if this wasn't a war, we could do this in other ways. Especially, so Takam Sothis is here. Like, well, not here right now, but she's outside. Honestly, if you weren't a king, I think we could have been friends. I mean, I still see no reason why that couldn't happen. I feel much the same. Had I joined with you, I might have been able to see a different vision of Fotland. <sighs> it wasn't your fault, Dimitri. It was not your fault. I don't understand why we couldn't just do that. Like, just talk, hey, Dimitri, here's what we want to do. Do you agree with that? Again, king, king, king. Still, though, they don't know who Blake, Violet Slash Blake is, but, uh, you know, that fact is still ringing in my mind because that's how Claude convinced uh, the round table to follow him. He's like, yeah, he, here's basically Sophis. Um, follow me. <laughs> and, you know, that that's something that Rhea could never do. Is, well, I mean, just can we can we get Sothis in here, please, somehow? Okay, thank goodness. I think the noise is finally gone. All right. But yeah, I feel like this is about to prove my point. Well, that was a big one right there. I mean, yeah, there's the whole Dimitri being king. And see, it's the brings the question, why does Rhea need to go down? Is it because she will hold the system in place? And if that's the question, it's like, well, no, I feel very strongly that Rhea can be convinced to get away or do away with that system I'm like yeah I'm gonna just be completely honest all right I'm gonna stop pulling my punches I honestly think that Rhea would be more opposed to Claude approaching her that we should talk to other nations versus Edelgard saying that we should change the crest system especially if Edelgard brings to her what's been happening because that that's really the main thing I want, right? Edelgard, out of everybody else, she has Rhea's crest. You know, she ha her family has her blessing in a sense. Would it be too impossible for Edelgard to just... I just don't know what would happen. And that's and as long as I don't know, I can't write it off as, a, oh yeah, Rhea would definitely not approve of that. You know, it's like, well, we don't know until we talk. No joke, what's happening right now is pretty much what I wanted to happen in a my ideal world fantasy um, with Blake. He goes to one of the routes. He sees what will happen, and he gets all three of these people, or all three of our leaders, down at a table, and we discuss. And we know that there is a path or path forward. Dimitri might not want Rhea defeated, but he certainly wouldn't be opposed to. Well, actually, he just said wouldn't be so bad. See, the game also did stuff. Like, the church has helped Fargus. There's been a civil war. And more than that, we currently don't have Byleth slash Blake because that was a big thing, too. It's like, if we literally have the incarnation of Sothis, then we can overrule Rhea. And more than that, Rhea would probably listen to what her mom says. But we aren't hearing Sothis at all. Hopefully we do, but... Alright. I guess now, Dimitri. I wonder... Yeah, though they shouldn't be. At least not Claude. Mm, honestly, I don't think Edelgard should either. Because again, if you agree... But from what's happened, yes, I understand they currently are mortal enemies. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm happy to be working together. Even though I, I don't look at you as a foe, Dimitri. Like, I'm not a leader, all right? Mm. Okay. Good. All three. I have to.
to say, this isn't how I imagined Fodlin's three most powerful leaders would be coming together. Neither did I, but it works. Indeed. I hesitate to even consider the look on Hubert's face right now. Actually, I want to see it. Uh, give me it. Uh, I want 4K. All right. Digital. Send it to me right now. I don't think anyone's too worried about me, though. Vanishing without a word is kind of what I do. Yeah, fair enough. Even now that I'm the king of the Federation, it looks like I'm as unreliable as ever. Or perhaps it's the opposite, and your people think you're reliable precisely because you always return. Well, that's a nice thought. It must be nice having friends you can depend on to handle important matters in your absence. Hmm. I'm not sure how things have changed with Aerogard in this route, but I know that was a big thing with her. You know, that she felt like she was alone, in a sense. And it must feel lousy to realize no one wants to do your job, Edelgard. I'm glad to see your tongue remains as agile as ever. Let's try moving our feet instead, shall we? Hey, I can do both if you want. It's definitely not an either-or kind of situation. Yo, that could be taken severely out of context, and I'm reminded that people said that this is a ship, apparently. I, obviously, I can see it. I, see, that's the thing with Edelgard. She's made for that. Like, not made specifically, but like, because of Edelgard, her choices, she can literally be shipped with probably most people in the game. And it wouldn't seem too far out there. Again, if I was a developer, I would do that intentionally. You want, if you're gonna make a controversial character, do whatever you can to make them as liked as possible. It just makes sense, it's, it's logical. So, Edelgard, say the four of us get out of here in one piece. Okay. What are you planning to do about Dimitri? Maybe we should join forces and take him on together. Hmm? You're such a bore sometimes, Claude. And is that a serious proposal? Hmm. Well, I suppose it would be easier for me if the kingdom stuck around. Hmm? After all, I get the feeling that if we divide Fodlin between the Empire and the Federation, I'll be the one holding the short end of that stick. Yeah. Our goal is to deal with Rhea and the Central Church, not to unify Fodlin. Well, that's interesting, Claude. Once again, though, sounds like even a lesser version of what Edelgar is trying to do. You never have been one to mince words, have you? Well then, allow me to match your honesty. It would be more convenient for me if the kingdom ceased to exist. Fair enough. The Central Church has a much closer relationship with Fargus than with the other regions. You did mention that. Even were we to capture the Archbishop and force her to dismantle the upper echelons of the church, it wouldn't be enough. <sighs> then there's Sothis, just chilling out there once again. But we can't talk about that. The roots of that organization run deep. They do, but Ray doesn't even... Okay, my apologies. If you see me getting more and more frustrated as this video goes on, it's because I don't understand why somebody outside needs to do what they're doing at this time of night. And for this long, it doesn't make sense. This is the most interesting conversation we've had in this game so far. Not that they haven't been interesting, but like, this is what I wanted, and now it's being ruined. But anyways, let me actually think about uh, what's been said here. I mean, they do run deep, but see, the problem is, I know Sedith, I know Flame, I know Rhea, you know, and they aren't that attached to the Crest system. Well, anyways. You hold on. You're just looking to capture Rhea? You're not gonna, you know, get rid of her? I was actually wondering about that. Is it not enough to subdue a foe and remove them from power? Who the heck are you? And Claw, why are we doing this? I'm just surprised. I would have expected you to be more thorough. And here I thought you wanted to pursue a peaceful solution. That should honestly be the case. Like, honestly speaking, there is no logical reason why Claw would want Rhea dead more than Nadelgard does. From what how the game has presented things. Hey, give me some credit. If I didn't like to rock the boat, Lester would have been swallowed up by the Empire ages ago. 
I have ambitions, Edelgard. Real ones. I won't go into details, but I'm definitely fighting to make them a reality. Yes, because those details would make Claude this much more Claude's route than it has been. All that, and you're not planning to enlighten me? Unreliable and stingy. I, for one, have no qualms with telling you my ambitions. I seek to destroy the irrational power structure that shackles Fodlin. I wonder what would happen if you actually did tell him back then in the Golden Deer route. Because Claude not saying what his true intentions were, I thought shot him in the foot. Well, not shot him in the foot. He shouldn't have had to back then, but if he had. Just Fodlin, huh? Come again? Hey, don't get me wrong. That's a goal I can get behind. That's why we're working together. But I'd be grateful if my own ambitions can be fulfilled at the end of your path of conquest. I'd like to believe that is possible. At least for now, we can work together to achieve a common goal. And perhaps someday, our pact will become a more permanent one. I hope so, at any rate. Same here. But before that, we need to find a way out of this place. Hmm. It is what I want, and yet at the same time, because, because of the, I feel like Claude has been restrained in some way and released in some way. Edelgard wants to just peacefully remove Rhea from power. Well, not peacefully, but you know, force her to, like, just... Am I crazy, everyone, or would it make sense that Claude would have a much bigger chance of doing that? Edelgard's the one who started the war against her. Unless Edelgard did try to talk Rhea out of, um... Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I would, I would buy that if Edelgard just attempted to have Rhea cease uh, the crest system, you know? And, uh, you know, try to convince her normally. Because the way she's approached, like, starting a war is an extreme reaction to that. And so I would expect a consistent follow through. The fact that she's not, that just, it seems weird to me. Yeah, it just seems weird. Like, Claude, I always thought that the difference between Claude and Dimitri and Aogar is that Claude, he didn't have a vengeance, so to speak, or, you know, his dead loved ones on his fam or on his mind dimitri did when trying to take on edelgard so that might have clouded his judgment and same with edelgard and her family you know um to attack Rhea. claude should be able to stand on the outside and detach himself from the situation the most so i don't know why they're Maybe it's also because I just consider Claude and myself to be most similar. But if I was in his position, I would... Like, if it came down to my team, you know, and doing what he did with Randolph, it's like, yeah, I can see myself doing something like that. But when it comes down to just, Rhea, what we essentially need is to end the war and we don't have to take you out. Especially since Rhea has done nothing malicious towards us. And actually helped us with Almira and stuff like that by sending a Shamir. It wasn't as much as Dimitri, but you know, our ledger with Rhea is not in the red, so yeah, it seems off. It almost seems like they're trying to force something, or rather, force Claude to make Rhea his final enemy. Yeah, I think I think that's what I'm seeing. The reason why, I'm not sure if I can determine without doing Dimitri or Edelgard's route, but um Okay, so it's been a while since I've done this, but I'm actually gonna come in and add a section to this episode. And considering who is all talking, it seems almost inevitable that I would. I almost got away with it, but on the subject of Edelgard sparing Rhea. I actually forgot that that was a big question I had in the Golden Deer route. We had five years and we could still rescue Rhea. I was like, why did that happen? And the only answer that I could come up with at the time was that the Agarthans needed a live sample to make the axe and, you know, basically do a lot of other experiments. I thought they were using Rhea's genes for 
a lot of stuff, including those monsters that we saw in the capital and even turning the Edelgard in the Blue Lion route to that form that she had. But I was also wondering how would Edelgard even explain that to the Black Eagles? You know, how do you explain containing the war after you've already, you know, captured Rhea essentially? But those questions were all avoided in the Crimson Flower route because Rhea stayed alive. And in the Crimson Flower route, I honestly get mixed signals. And I think it's best mirrored with how you handle Claude. You can both spare Claude or kill Claude. And in both instances, I think you get different Edelgards. Well, I'll say this. It seemed like Edelgard really preferred for Claude to, you know, be taken out permanently. And I think it mirrors the conversation that we had in this episode. Edelgard was like, if I'm just being frank, it will be more beneficial for me if certain things would happen. And I can definitely say Claude, who somehow got Almira to come to his side, it definitely would be beneficial, you know, if he was taken out. But more than that, I'm also reminded of in When the Crimson Flower Out, when you do the Linhart and Leonie's paralogue, Linhart mentions that they shouldn't tell Edelgard or Hubert who they're going to meet. And the impression that I got is that if they knew there was a saint there, they would want to take him out. They're trying to get rid of the crests completely, wipe them out from the world. And that means the progenitors of those, he, he, want to take them out too but then there's also situations like flane and how there's a possibility that edelgard wanted to actually rescue flane from the agarthans when you know monica slash crania came through and snuck in the school but then you also have the fact of only byleth slash blake could actually spare seth and flane when you fight them if you try it with edelgard they're just gonna fall so long story short i get mixed signals and honestly, truly, in my opinion, I still think if Edelgard is starting a war, which a lot of people who have nothing to do, you know, a lot of people that realistically speaking, you would be trying to save are going to die because of it. Like so many people are going to die because Edelgard started the war. So I would think sparing Rhea, because here's my thinking, right? I'm assuming Edelgard is assuming that the crest system, Rhea will not give it up. And if that's the case, then Edelgard says, I have no choice, I have to start war. So therefore, you could also say that Edelgard could place all the depths on Rhea's hands because she had to go through this in order for change to happen. Therefore, it, to me, makes even less sense that Edelgard would even consider sparing Rhea after all that. Not to mention, one more thing that I'm assuming Claude doesn't know at this point, Rhea's a dragon. The immaculate one when i was saying a lot of what i was saying in this episode i was assuming claude doesn't know that particular fact if he does then that changes some things but i at least think edelgard does trying to capture a dragon who you have angered probably more in their life besides nemesis that just not doesn't seem like a viable option at least especially without the agarthans help all in all i am beyond shocked that even with all that I've said, because they never addressed why Edelgard kept Rhea alive um, in those five years in the other routes, because it was never brought up in the Crimson Flower route, unless it was brought up in the Silver Snow route, then I don't know. But to me, it makes no sense. If Edelgard's willing to let all these other people die, then surely the reason for starting the war, I don't see why she's trying to just beat her into submission especially knowing what she is and how she's trying to get rid of crest completely like just being honest as long as Rhea is alive she could easily just have children and then boom or do the same thing like edelgard has her crest you know there, there are many options that Rhea can use to continue the crest system if Rhea had that intention so either way let me know what you all think down in the comments below this point was just a little bit weird to me, but let's get back to the episode. Any flash of inspiration? Oh, yeah, oh. I, don't worry. Oh, we'll find a way out because I put us in here, technically. So. Oh, really? Mm, probably. Oh, wait. Dimitri and Edelgard are having a conversation? 
I'll end with this. And I've always said plenty of times that my issue with this war is that it didn't seem like a war of ideals. And this, I think, paints it perfectly. Dimitri. Hey, you know what? I personally agree, agree with you, Claude. But as king, I can't let that happen. If that was our reason for fighting Dimitri, then I'd be like, okay, we both have to fight for our own people and, you know, our stations, you know, whatever you like to say. It's like, all right, I can respect that reason. But just running up on him when we've had no beef or we haven't even tried to talk things out. I don't like that. With Edelgard. Why are we fighting? Well, honestly, I wonder if there was still, I guess, because in Ed if Edelgard's blunt, it would be advantageous if Claw wasn't there because then she could just implement her rules without any resistance. But as far as her philosophies, her ideals, they're the same as ours. So there's, in my mind, there's no reason to fight. Then there's Claude. Didn't even want this war in the first place. So he wants to end it in the way, quickest way possible. But he also has the same philosophies as Dimitri and Edelgard. I went through all their routes and they all said the same thing. Get rid of the crest system. And Rhea also seems like she has a very heavily distaste of, you know, people using her siblings to, you know, commit heinous acts and stuff like that. Or I say siblings, her family, her people. It's like, I guess if they wanted to go this route, Rhea should be here. You know? Like, would it, that would be, that would actually be very interesting if Rhea was also trapped in this place. Because she would be their biggest enemy besides, you know, Bio slash Blake of the Agarthans. Not these three. Well, maybe that's debatable, but. Yeah. Um, I think that. If we got Rhea here, and if Rhea, you know, spoke to why she didn't want to do what they were saying, like if it was a situation where Dimitri, where she personally agrees with them, but she has no choice because of her position, because of how she set things up. Anyways, for the Golden Deer's sake, I, I, I feel like we're being forced into some things a bit, but anyways. Those are just my thoughts. Uh, maybe I'll streamline them more later. Yeah, I probably won't. <laughs> this is conversation's been long enough already, and I've lost a lot of time. Ah, so we can embark. I guess the real issue why I don't want to say or feel like I can't say everything I want to say is because I feel like I need the other two routes in order to perfectly say some stuff. But let's just go ahead and give it a shot, anyways. How it currently feels is that Claude needs to... It's basically what people's uh, complaint was about Claude in... Um, for, for the Golden Wildfire, or the Golden Deer route that I heard in Three Houses, it, people said that Claude felt like he had to act a certain way because his route was basically aligning with the Silver Snow route. But I also feel like it's... He, right now, he's feeling more so like he's just trying to align with Edelgard's route, whereas the Silver Snow route, he was more trying to align with Rhea's. Well, I don't want to honestly think he was trying to align with uh, Rhea's philosophy. It's just that we were helping her, similar to how we're just helping Edelgard. But it's like, where is the true middle ground? The true Claude's route is not something they're being allowed to happen. And I honestly think it might be along the lines of the Golden route. Claude's hatred, or the lack of hatred towards Rhea that Edelgard had should make Claude want to talk to Rhea like he did in the Golden Deer route, but he also doesn't approve of her methods, so that might put him at odds with Dimitri as well, thus making him a true third route. But I'll discuss that more in another video. For now, those are just my immediate thoughts, and we gotta inspect this distortion, so I'll say that for another episode. For now, if you guys have any thoughts, as always, post them down in the comments below and let me know what you thought about this whole conversation um, between the leaders. Um, if you thought something was missing, if you thought something else should be added, 
if you thought some of the things that they said were strange and you personally didn't agree with them. Uh, whatever you like to say. So, that being said, please post your thoughts down in the comments below, and I will see you all next time.